But there's this thing that gets in the way. And it's called fear. Fear. That's why I stepped up this morning with a brown paper bag, which really is a cool bag. I might keep it and use it for other things. And told the kids I had a snake in it. Because approximately 40 years ago, I think I was about 9 or 10, my brother walked into the house with a brown paper bag. It was my birthday. I had this great big brown paper bag. And he was, this thing was moving around inside of it like crazy. And I was going nuts. Well, it's in there. And he told me it was an iguana. And I freaked. Because I am afraid of snakes and frogs and lizards and crocodiles. Anything reptilian, please, you know, there is a planet for them. It's called Mars. <laughs> you know, there's a place for everything in God's creation. Those things, there. And I ran out of the house in terror. What he had in the bag was actually a soccer ball, and he was going like this with it, making it roll around inside. It was my birthday gift. I, you know, some things never, you never forget. Fear. I was just, ah. And there's been moments in my life when I, that's happened again. And it's not always something as simple and as childlike as an iguana soccer ball. Sometimes it's hearing a loved one is dying. Sometimes it's hearing your own health is not great. Sometimes it's being heard that there's cutbacks at work. Sometimes it's hearing about the ill health of a good friend. Sometimes it's a disaster in a foreign land in which just the overwhelming debris and death shocks us and we think we can't deal with that. So we tune it out. There's fear for our well-being, there's fear for our economic survival, there's fear, you know, I'm, I'm listing these and I know, I'm, I'm seeing your faces, you have your own litany of your fears that are just rolling right now, aren't they? Things we're afraid of that will diminish us, make us less than we are now, that, that we will feel overwhelmed by. Fear of flying, fear of going across water in boats, fear of anything. And you know, here's the question. How many people here have never felt fear? You can't say no. <laughs> I know that. How many people here have never felt fear? How many people here have found at times in their life they've made decisions because they were afraid? It's okay, you can confess. We do it all the time. How many times have you, how many of you have done, have not done something because your fear got in the way? Actually, I need to hold up like two hands and, and my feet and everything because there's been so many times in my life my fears have got in the way. And that surprises me. Because I had an experience years ago in which I felt that I felt the presence of God's love in my life. And I thought I would never lose that. And that I would never ever be beyond the moment when I knew that God loved me. But almost every day we lose it. Almost every day we get overwhelmed by the stuff around us that wants to tear us down. And so we forget that God loves us and we forget to hold up our teddy bear and we forget to hug it to ourselves and we forget that God isn't asking me to do anything other than be me. Be me. Be really me though. Be all the me I'm called to be. God never asks us for anything more than God made us to be. And we forget that. Because we look around the world and we see the greatness of people we have put on pedestals. 
we have lifted them up to sainthood for the things that they've accomplished in this world and say, I could never do that. And we've just acknowledged in that, in lifting them up, we've made them more than we are, not because we love them more than we love ourselves, because we're running in front of our own fears more than we have ever run before. But the Bible always resounds with messages that tell us otherwise. It says, The Lord is my life and my salvation. I will fear no one. The Lord protects me from all danger. I will never be afraid. God is our shelter and our our strength, the rock in which I will take refuge, an always ever-present ready help in trouble, so I will not be afraid. Even though I go through the deepest darkness, I will not be afraid. Lord, you are with me. Your staff and your rod will comfort me. Heard all these words before? Have you? I have. And most days between 8 o'clock in the morning and uh, you know, 9, 10 o'clock at night, I forget them. Because I get caught up in life. Will I be there on time? Do I do what, I, what, I'm, what I'm able to do? Will, I be, you know, will it work? Will it won't work? Uh, will I have enough money to do this? Will I be able to do whatever I need to do in this world? We all have those things, the things. Will my health hold up? What if I'm not feeling well? What if I get dizzy? What if I get sick? What if I stand up in front of that church and throw up because I'm so nervous? It's an image you didn't really need to have, but you got it. (laughs) Sometimes we're afraid we'll make the wrong decision. We are afraid what other people will think of us. We're afraid of what the future will bring for our children. Want to make me afraid? Talk to me about what world my little boy is going to grow up in. Terrifies me. Want to make me even more afraid? Make me think about the world I raised my other children in. Sometimes we let all of that overwhelm us. And we need to hear Jesus say, I'm sending you out. I'm sending you out. Not to be superhumans, not to be superheroes, not to be super disciples. I didn't want super disciples. I just wanted people who could hear the truth about God's love and about what it means for all people and to share it. I wasn't joking with the kids when I said, this is a teddy bear. Congregations that work are teddy bears. They're places where people can come into and be themselves and share the word and get a recharge that they go back into their daily life and feel like I was someplace where I mattered and the rest of my world matters too. And I can deal with it out there. It being whatever it is that's going to terrify you. The crocodiles of your world, so to speak. I can deal with it out there because I have that place where I can get the strength and the reminder that wherever I am, I am with God. Wherever I am, I am with God. And then you can have no fear. Or if you have fear, you know that you don't face it alone. Trust in the Lord. Have faith. Do not despair. Trust in the Lord. I wish they could say those those are my words, but they're not. That's the last verse of Psalm 27. That little 